Hello and welcome to Dreaming Live al Hub al Hub. Um, so this is um, this episode. I recorded it uh, three months ago. We're February. I recorded it. I think in November or December. Um, and when I after recording it, it became clear to me that I wanted to depict this episode, which is essentially about the movement that is Detroit techno. That is techno. That I need to depict it in the context of jazz. Um, and that is why I, dis- I I put it on pause. I did the episodes, we did the episodes, uh, Tyrell and I did the episode, the tribute to Alice Coltrane, and then I did the, the episode with Marshall Allen of Sunra Orchestra, only now to present Detroit techno. So what's the connection between techno and jazz? You see, classical music, beautiful as it is, was a rather rigid form of art. Uh, Every note is to be played perfectly as planned. Making a mistake is almost like the end of the world, which I respect very much. It takes um, a lot of skill. But improvisation is heavily discouraged. It's better to play as planned than to make a single mistake. So Jazz came and said, leave it all behind. Awaken your instincts, your instincts in that moment, and let your intuition guide every note and that you play in every movement that you make. Let your intuition speak. So mistakes are welcomed because the point is where the music is coming from. It's coming from your instincts in that moment. Turn mistakes into happy accidents. Let them reveal a path you could have never pre-planned or envisioned. This expression of freedom cannot be removed from the context and reality of the history of slavery. Jazz came out of a cry for freedom, creating a universe whereby black artists became unshackled and free in a reality in which they were not. And techno is an extension of that. It is jazz with high-tech tools. As the song, one of the songs on you are, techno is high-tech jazz, modern soul. So when people portray techno as only being rooted in black culture or as just something that evolved from black culture, this is unfair. Techno is celestial, cosmic, spiritual, black music. It is high-tech jazz. It is the spiritual liberation of artists that were shackled and in shackled environments. And what happened after that, the formulas that later now came to define what techno is today, perhaps they have some technical elements related to techno, but spiritually they are formulas So this episode is dedicated to the spirituality of Detroit techno, to the art of experimentation and to the liberation that is techno and to the socio-political revolutionary movement of the record label and movement, Underground Resistance. So it is with great pleasure today to host one of the co-founders of Underground Resistance, along with uh, Jeff Mills, and uh, we're hosting Mike Banks, who has, if I'm not mistaken, only agreed to do like three interviews in the last, I don't know, 40 years. Um, I listened to, re-listened today to the episode after three months, and honestly, I cried. Um, It's really beautiful. I will start, as always, with playing a segment of one of the songs, one of my favorite favorite songs in the world and it's from the label and produced by Mike as well Um, I would like you to please feel not only the rhythmic complexity but also the warmth and color of the pads the pads that hit you like beautiful clouds and after my discussion with Ma and after uh, that song I'm just going to play a segment of the song uh, and then after that my discussion with Mike and lastly, put a mix together uh, that uh, mix that was put together by one of my favorite humans on this earth. So enjoy this episode, um, and thank you to everyone that helped make it happen. Um, I want to send a very special thank you 
to Cornelius Harris uh, for uh, without you this episode would not have happened. So thank you so much to everyone involved. Uh, much love and enjoy. Yeah, hey, how you doing? At least you can see what I look like. Yeah, of course, it's yeah. like more human this way, but it's not going to be streamed like this. Yeah, okay, good. I trust you. No, no, you I know. You. I mean, it's a radio. Yeah, they they got me. Uh, what was it, Corn? About 15, 20 years ago, I had went twenty two years with a mask on. Nobody knew who I was, basically. But this guy, uh, it was with the cell phone. Yep, and he did like that and i didn't know what he was aiming at me you know it was after a show it's one of those and, uh, 500 shows i think it was it was in italy yeah turin turin italy uh, yeah. and that and was the first me. time when was that uh i don't know about 15 20 years ago it was a while but they got me but hey it, it was good i had a 20 year run so that was good you know, and I don't be seen too much. So, uh, you know, 
Well, but, I, I, you know, like the, the this show and this project for me, like really is about values. And I think that you have really revolutionary values, you know, that like, okay, music and all that, but the values that uh, behind what you do is, uh, and I hope like, to cover that today, <laughs> the values behind. Well, and thank you. Uh, you know, it, uh, it, it evolved out of many great lessons from great people. Um, Don Davis, uh, George Clinton, um, Teddy Dudley. Uh, I had a lot of examples of uh, how destructive uh, fame, my mother, you know, my mother, she's an artist too. And uh, she would always talk about some of her friends that just gets destroyed by popularity. I mean, and then it happens on TV every day. You know, you get people that people become fanatical about them. And then they have this, the artist had this crazy pressure to deliver all the time for the fan, fanatical people. It's a, uh, it's like a love imbalance, you know what I'm saying? And it's a little crazy. So uh, for us, I uh, just, I took it for what it is. It's a, it's a, it's a piece of soul captured on wax, a piece of, piece of uh, like a hell of a Christmas card you could send somebody or something, you know, it's a piece of inspiration. Just a moment in time, really. We even made a record about it a moment in time. So it's it's uh it's more of a spirit spiritual trade that you give to people really. Um of with course, the, I, I I always say like through art, uh, art carries messages from the inner consciousness, like true art when it's from yeah. inside, not when it caters yeah. to entertainment and not when it uh, is made to not when not when it's compromised and sometimes people unknowingly do like entertain but when it comes from really inside it carries messages through place and through time too like um you know messages from our ancestors and that's how art that's the difference between timeless art and trend yeah well for me i think uh yeah as long as the artist stays in back of the art you know the artists a lot of times think they created the art but the way we see it is nah you was just there and you caught the moment you had the right tools you had the right situation and it came down and you caught the moment if you stand in front of the speakers to your music then you block the music you know you in the way of the music so uh, I try to stay out of the way of the music. So many artists start out and you know them, you know them by their art. And then later in life, you can meet them and say, man, what an asshole. He really, <laughs> he really, he really, uh, excuse my language, he really fucked up my vision of the art. Well, you shouldn't blame the artist, you know. He is just a tool. He don't realize it because the media can build you into what they want to build you into. And they've tried, Cornelius to tell you, uh, Cornelius is a very special person for you are because he understands that, uh, yeah, man, it's just the music, man. The, the individuals, uh, they're going to die, they come and go. Uh, the music is consistent. It's something that's been with us since we first started beating drums but you don't know the name of the first drummer or the 300th drummer, or they just guys that played the drum. So I kind of look at it as uh, basically, I'm a mechanic and a construction worker who occasionally, I guess when cosmic forces align, get, get sent down something that's way beyond my capability to create. Uh, like I'm, you, I saw your questions and you mentioned high tech jazz. And uh, I remember my mother saying, did you make this, Michael? I can't believe, I can't believe you made something like this. You know, and I said, yeah, I, I can't even, ma. So when she asked me that, I thought about, you know, what George Clinton told me, what Don Davis told me. I, th I thought about the special moments 
that you was just there. Yeah, like a messenger. Exactly, exactly. So for me, I just, I, I never have set schedules when I'm going to make music or I got to be in the studio. I got to finish this album. I never do that. I just wait until the calling and then I get up here and give it a shot. That's it. That's pretty much it. Yeah, about uh, what you were saying about the power of music, it was uh, one of the things I did want to ask, which I guess we already covered now is like music over musicianship. Is that the like music over musician? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, like the, the music is before the artist. Um, and, and, yeah. Yeah. Well, you, you, you know what's, what's unique about Detroit techno that I really liked about it was that um, many of the musicians I found, because I, I play instruments, I played in church, I played in bands. So I was familiar with the tuning scales and blah, blah, blah. But it just intrigued me when I would hear some of my friends' music and it wouldn't be in any particular key. Uh, uh, if you defined it by classical terms, it was completely incor incorrect. And I, I come to find out that I learned from them and particularly Juan Atkins um, that actually the less you know about music, the more advantage you have to explore different areas of music. And uh, not only that, you know, find your true self because, you know, for us as a transplanted, transplanted Africans, Western classical music isn't, you know, not our native native music. And uh, in fact, we have no idea what our native music is. We we got. I I tend to think that uh, this is this is one that I I know I know for sure. Um, you know how they say fear fear can travel through DNA. Yes. Yeah, I think beats and rhythms can too. Of course. Um, yeah, I, I don't think, I think if something that close to you, no matter how many times you've been mutated and fucked over, the beats and the rhythms still be there. So- uh, Not only in, but also free. They also, yeah. there's a free element and- Yeah. yeah. Especially like, I, um, like with Detroit techno, you're talking about how like uh, you you know learn the less you know the freer you are but also uh, about how you have to be open you know the, the coil uh, one of the bands i really like they say that you have it's like uh, the search for extraterrestrial uh, yeah, you have to listen yeah. to all of the sky for one sound that's it that's it and you, detroit you, techno you... was cosmic that way it was vast yeah. it was very different from what the techno, what became of it, a formula, a very <laughs> structured and uh, you know what to expect. It's like, it, of course, I don't consider this at all techno or you know, anything similar to Detroit techno, what happened to it, but yeah. Detroit techno was so liberating. Yeah, it was, well, you know, yeah, I think uh, the city was so abandoned that, uh, we didn't have any particular uh, interest. Uh, we had no uh, capitalistic interest in the city as far as music was going, like like a big marketplace like LA or New York. I'm, I'm just describing to you how, uh, and this is where you are is very passionate, is uh, freedom of radio, freedom, freedom to listen to, to variants. Um, Detroit was a pretty much an abandoned market. So the DJs here, as opposed to maybe bigger markets, Miami or LA, or the DJs here could pretty much play what they wanted to play. And uh, yeah, I can, I can safely tell you one guy, one guy uh, in particular, many of the DJs did this, but one guy in particular, and you, hopefully you've heard of him, but the electrifying mojo, Yes. To me, he he is the father of Detroit techno because he played music 
from any and everywhere and any it was it was genreless music you know if that's a word it was uh and so we were uh we might have been poor uh financially as compared to the rest of the world but i feel that we were billionaires in 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 music just our music education and uh possibilities of music so i think I think, and I, I'm pretty, I know we were way ahead uh, as far as, you know, what music can do. And, and keep in mind, it's the 70s, um, 60s. I'm, I was a kid in the 60s and I saw musicians, uh, I saw musicians take up arms with their instruments against a, a, a very unpopular war amongst the young people. And uh, yeah, music can move mountains. Uh, Bob Dylan, Jimi Hendrix, Joan Baez, Grateful Dead, uh, Sly Stone, many, many people went to, went to, went to war, but they used music. So, uh, and of course, the war became increasingly unpopular amongst the young people that listened to the music. And uh, certainly it played a big part in, uh, ending the Vietnam War. So I actually knew what music could do. Uh, it also helped the civil rights marchers and, you know, artists, Harry Belafonte, all those guys was marching with the people and, you know, and making music that went along with it. So movies and music. So, you know, uh, art, yeah, art can move, art can move things that sometimes it takes politics two or 300 years to do, to accomplish. Um, yeah, um, there in the you, you are describes like music and dance as the key to the universe. And also there's always references like electronic warfare designs for mm. revolutions. Yeah. Uh, you know, of, yes, uh, I, of course I fully agree. And back to uh, about the Detroit Techno and the electric mojo, it was actually something I want to ask, wanted to ask about, because for me, one of the main differences between Detroit Techno, the, what, like, the thing is a lot of people that are not familiar with Detroit Techno, they think that things evolved from Detroit Techno, but it's not true. Nothing mm. evolved. It, if any, like what we have today is for me like a tragedy compared to what happened or in the, to the expression of Detroit techno. And one of the points for me, for me, really as a student of Detroit techno, for me, Detroit techno was a university. It was I learned everything. Like I have record like compilations from Detroit that have Chris and Cozy and the uh, Liaison Dangereuse, and, you know, a lot of diversity, not just one uh, style. Even in the rhythmic complexity of Detroit techno, that, that almost, you know, it made electro inevitable, you know, or an inevitable. Mm. Uh, uh, so, yeah, it was, uh, so, sorry, I kind of skipped two things, but yeah, Detroit techno was a university. And of course, I do think also that Electric Mojo played a very big role he, he to me to me he's the keystone like they say in the da vinci code he's the he's the keystone for me i mean it was many i can't describe uh the climate of i think the climate of coming out of the 60s and into the 70s and then into the 80s with the with the crack crack cocaine plague you know we we get viruses every 10 years in the hood you know, but um, I guess as they think of them, but <laughs> we, uh, it was a hell of a climate too that contributed to it. And that's, that's something you can't really put your finger on. It's also uh, electronic innovation, um, certain technologies that the Japanese invented, um, made it affordable for inner city kids to uh, have an expression, a, a, a drum machine, or, a, you know, you didn't have to have a three or $400 guitar. You could have a, a, you can, you know, you could have a little drum machine that costs $35 from the pawn shop. Um, it's, it's, it's a big issue that uh, me and Cornelius address even now as uh, a lot of the electronic uh, 
music makers, the music, the people that manufactured equipment, they, you know, with the success of uh, electronic music, they started making equipment that cost, you know, $5,000, $6,000, $7,000. You know, they revived all the analog keyboards. Oh, yeah, and blah, 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 yeah, blah, yeah. Blah. yeah. And uh, my argument with them was I can't, first of all, I already used the shit, you know, it's boring. And then next, you pricing, you know, hip hop, house music, and techno, they all come from the same place. They come from the hood. Some of the worst, poorest places in America. And you pricing us out the game. You pricing the most creative people, people under pressure, man. Pressure makes struggle, struggle makes sound, bro. So you pricing us out the game, man. And uh, and I'm, I'm proud to say many of them have adjusted. Uh, uh, teenage Engineering, Korg, uh, Doffler, you know, uh, elect, uh, what's that, Electron. A lot of them, when, once they hear what I got to say, uh, Ableton, they go, damn, wow, we didn't, we, sorry, man, we didn't even realize we was doing that. And they, they come back and they make stuff that's affordable and inclusive, and it keeps poor folks in the game. You know, rich, rich folks don't make nothing funky, man. They make happy shit because they happy all the time. You know, we make the real shit. So, you know, if you want to hear some real shit, that's why I don't worry about when you're talking about the EDM. And Yeah, they happy. They, they fly around and go from gear. I actually met some of these people and they don't even realize how crazy it is when they say, oh, yes, I just flew over here to be at this gig and then I flew over there to be at this gig. And, and I'll be like, oh, well, that's 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 something that's nice, you know, but they don't really understand. For me, they making stuff we made in the 90s. It's 30 years behind, you know. Not um, even. I wish yeah, like, it sounds yeah. so clean and so crispy. <laughs> and and yeah. then now there's like a yeah, anyway, we can skip that. Yeah, but you know what? Don't get mad at them. Don't get mad at them. At least they dancing, they loving each other, and they ain't got an army helmet on invade somebody's damn country you know these people were yeah. out, they getting high and dancing and uh i think they it's a for some of them maybe out of an edm crowd maybe two or three percent of them might say wonder wonder what's at the beginning of this i wonder what you know so i've actually had people yeah, that true. wander back and find detroit techno through this uh this yeah this this music so it's uh yes yeah, to me that behavior is yeah, a given it's a it's a puzzle i mean i used yeah, well to... it's a given if you if you study uh eurocentric eurocentrics it's it's gonna happen they it's a it's a given they star trek had them laid out it's the borg you know they're gonna assimilate your shit and use the parts they want and throw the rest away um it's like taco bell we live with assimilation every day here uh in in fact, uh, Middle Eastern food, they started to, you know. Yeah, yeah. I was going to make that reference, like green uh, avocado hummus and stuff. I'm like, wow. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we, we, blessed, we blessed here. We got the biggest Middle Eastern population in the United States, so we know the real shit. You know, you go somewhere else and they have tabbouleh. I'm like, this ain't no fucking tabbouleh, man. What is It's American yeah. tabbouleh. You know, the, the, Borg, the Borg got a hold to it, so. It's the same thing they did to Detroit Techno, but yeah, but, you know. but in Detroit it was pretty um, uh, like aggressive. I remember hearing that some people would uh, buy postal codes in Detroit or something just yeah. to pretend that it's a Detroit record or stuff like that. Like some, I, some would some would even move here and uh, stay a year or two. Those was the brave ones. They would come and stay <laughs> six months a year and claim Detroit. Yeah, you know, you can get hung up into that, but I have a very dear friend of mine that is a brilliant musician. You probably know who I'm talking about, and I'm talking to him through you. But he spends so much of his time fighting about who's the real Detroit and who's the fake Detroit. And when he when he's missing the calling, he's missing the calling. For me, these people are a given. When you dig down to it, if you do your work, if you really want to know, we, we'll be there. We're there. But if you get 
caught up into who's stealing what. And I mean, if a person can steal your whole damn country, what the fuck difference does a, a track of the music won't mean nothing to them? <laughs> yeah. So I look at that behavior as a given. And in a mathematics, you know, I ain't no mathematician, but when you know X and you know Y, you can figure out the, the reason. You can figure out the problem. So uh, for me, if you know people steal, why not give them a, a little bit of something to steal? Why not let them steal something that's going to change their DNA? Uh, in the UR Creed, we encourage people to create. Wow, that's beautiful. Did you always have this? Because for, like, for me, to be honest, you know, growing up, in the middle of the like you know jordan is between uh, uh, you know uh, palestine lebanon and syria iraq the whole destruction of everything i grew up i had a lot of anger recently i'm starting to have a more peaceful um, approach to uh, things did you always have this or also did you transition uh, for me i only very recent i'm like tired of that I, I got tired of the anger and the this and that came with those feelings and uh, start to yeah. but, but this idea it's so beautiful that you know we'll give them something that will change their dna and maybe they'll be nicer like that's really like well i mean not so much that they be nicer it just uh or like it, change the consciousness yes yes it opens them up and um i hate to say this but uh i i, I study viruses to me, viruses manage us. <laughs> we got no control over them. So uh, if I'm gonna study the top species on the planet and how it works, it's, it's, a, bit, it's a bit of a intrigue with me and viruses and, and my, my buddies, we look at them closely because certainly in the US election, if you study viruses, you can implant a viral idea and host host will host it they will host the idea to the point where the guy you want gets elected or whatever you know so uh a lot of times you have to uh live i feel like living here in detroit is like living in the asshole of america i get to see all the dirty shit that goes down the pipe all the time all the time. Like I said, we get viruses every 10 years here. In the 70s, it was heroin. In the 80s, it was crack. In the 90s, it's something else. You know, it's always something to try to virally kill us off and get rid of us. Because the truth of the matter is, in some people's eyes, we are, uh, what's the word, corn? Uh, out of date workforce no longer needed i mean yeah, if you know people can, yeah yeah if you know people can think like that then and you study uh this movie called kill the messenger if you if you study kill the messenger you'll see that uh there has always been uh experiments to get rid of us it's like it's like we roaches and shit. but you know there's a certain strength in roaches though you just can't get rid of them so uh, I always look that way. If I can uh, re-implant some shit back in you, then maybe we won this time, you yeah. know? Uh, you know, I had to, like every uh, Arab parent dream I, is to, for their kids to get a passport that, uh, you know, the difference between the Syrian kid that drowned and the one that didn't when the war happened was their ability to enter a country with a paper, right? So mm -hmm. this in uncertainty, it makes, it put a lot of us in self-exile in a way or parents inflicted exile to for uh, the dream of a passport. And finally, I was able to apply to mine. My, my dad, he grew up in Jerusalem, for example, in Palestine, but... Uh, he, we can't, he can't go back or, you know, so, but with a Canadian passport, I can go back and stuff. So I can go there. And um, uh, so uh, 
No, I feel I you. My, 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 uh, no, no, I, I feel, I feel you. I feel what you're saying. Uh, I, I, you ain't got to say it. I feel yeah. what you're saying. It's just like with us, like right now. Uh, yeah, a lot of times I feel trapped in Detroit, but them little records I make, they they go all around the world and they inspire things that we couldn't even imagine. So I started to understand that even though like my physical might be pretty fucked up and I know I got all kind of asbestos and shit from working in my lungs, even though the body is uh, deteriorating because of this place that I live in that I probably don't even, I don't know where the fuck I'm supposed to live at, you know, really. But uh, this energy, this, this connection I got with this, I don't, I don't know if it's music. I think it's uh, a transfer of spirit and hope and, uh, and oh, not, I don't want to say like awakening, but, you know, just the aspect that everybody thinks we could stamp out a virus. The, the smallest little shit actually controls us. So yeah. it takes a, it takes a, uh, sometimes I don't think Detroit was good for us. Um, musically, I try to do right, but I'm not going to always say that I do. Some of that shit ain't right. And I think that's the other part about you are that confuses people when they, they get apprehensive about it. Like what, what is that? Like I'll give you an example. Part of part of you are what it means is urban reality. So I got an artist here on the label who is a government certified crazy. Went to the military, came back nuts. He was nuts before he went to the military. But you know, his issue. His issue got a sound. He, yeah. he was created out here. He went to the military to get away from the shit and he came back worse. So his issue has a sound. And I know that issue is gonna ring a bell with other people around the world because it's some urban reality. It's not some shit that Tiesto and them and EDM can cover with their happy ass. They can't cover that. So. Yeah. It's like with Drexia and all that shit. There's no ocean around here. These motherfuckers yeah. is imagining shit. Yeah. Because they they living in a jail. We live in this big ass prison. All these cities is giant fucking prisons. Now, if you're good in music or sports, you entertain us, yeah, maybe you make it out. Now you got a false, and when you were speaking about sellouts. I can tell you about sellouts. We trained that if you make it out to where the white man live at, you did good. <laughs> you made it. You're a fucking American now. You know, you see what I'm saying? So for a lot of the people that sell out, they're conditioned to think if I get away from this shit, I do better. Whereas where you are, we know we are part of the shit. We, we're, we're sitting on a pile of shit and we're a piece of corn in it. You know what I'm saying? No offense, corn. No, <laughs> no offense. But, but you so, feel me? Yeah, but so you, you, you did as an art, you came face to face with the ability to go into that world and you were faced, I'm sure, with temptation. How, what made you stick to your values and stick to your dedication to your community, oh, and to your vision? That, that's an easy one. I used to do evictions here in the city. I was part of the team to come and kick the door in and throw your ass in the street. I saw so many famous people hold up their trophies and hold up their awards and all the little shit that people had given them to tell them they were somebody. But to me, you was just somebody I had to put out. Your, your, your yeah. accolades meant nothing. Yeah, you I see? think, 
a lot of the times when people sell out, it's like they become a trend and then they die and then they become like everything else. And then they die out very quickly and we don't even notice them. They come and like they, where our timeless art, I think is like maybe less of a peak and, but just more. Uh, well, you know, if we could spend all day talking about misguidance, but the basic principle in America is if you become white, you're successful. You have to, you have to change and be like for Arabic people. Yeah, yeah. You know, get rid of Allah and come on and join the team. And you know, blah, blah, blah. I know we yeah, say yeah. we got we got freedom of religion and we yeah, we got freedom, but it's better if you get on with Jesus and Catholicism, then you can really be on the team. You see, so for people that don't convert, uh yeah, they catch hell. And uh, for us, what they call us, hood rats or uh, whatever, clearly a lot of us can see, like, I ain't gonna fit in in Paris. <laughs> I ain't gonna fit in in Berlin. And mm -hmm. I, I, I'm just not, I, I, I only fit in right here. That's This is my shit. I have found other places in the world very similar to here, like East Germany. I fit in there, cause they ain't have shit. <laughs> they was happy as hell when we would come and do the little gig. And after the gig, you wasn't a DJ guy. They would just be like, hey, man, it was a good set. And <laughs> they go home. They didn't have nothing else to say to you. This was just, they was just happy to get out the house and have a good time. So I have found places around the world where I knew, damn, there's many assholes in these uh, big countries that you think is great you know, Manchester and uh, uh, Leeds and all that working up in Scotland, a lot of uh, Poland, a lot of places where it shit ain't all happy, you know? So that tended to be where we enjoy being as well. So I don't, I don't know if I'm getting off the subject with you. But... No, no, absolutely. This is, so what happened with me, I had to leave, uh, you know, my parents dream of getting a passport. And after some years in Canada, I went on a holiday. I was three months away from being able to apply for the passport, but I went on holiday and I just could not go back. Like I spent up staying two years. I messed up all my papers and I was forced <laughs> to come back. To do another two, year and a half now soon yeah. i can go back home yeah. uh, but the, the thing for me also is like there's also a difference because when in home there's like a, a a community of people that unite different you know palestine is occupied so there's different parts that they didn't know each other because the israelis do not allow them to cross the, into each other mm -hmm. there's no freedom of movement and uh, just as little note, uh, but you were talking that there, you don't have a sea and Draxia was imagining the sea. There's people like in Gaza who have a sea, but they will get shot if they touch it. Like they can't mm -hmm. even, you know, swim in the sea. But yeah, so it's, you know, we have an art movement that unites different parts of Palestine, of Jordan, of Lebanon, Egypt. And, and we are reclaiming our identity because it's the, the media and is always trying to desensitize the world to our humanity. That yeah, yeah. way, millions of dead Iraqi is nothing. It's just a number. But right. And this is the power of music is when then they hear and they connect with, say, art from someone from there. Luckily, they start to see us as human being for it. But, but we don't do it for the, anyone. We're just tired of teach. We're t I'm tired of being here and hearing all the misconceptions about Arabs. And I just feel like I want to go there. I want us to express for us, not to please anyone, but Right. I know that that's also doing something, but that's not yeah. why we're doing it. But, 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 but same with Detroit. And I think you are also has very strong role in creating alternative identities in that sense. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, and you, you know, you just, I think, I think if, uh, you know, the world, the world should use us as an example, you know, the things you fighting. Like when you say sell out, I know some of your people sell out. They, of they, course. they, yeah, of they course. can't wait. Uh, they can't wait to being. get the fuck out of there and all that. And of so, course. you know, we, we, this is unfortunate, but I have to tell you, we are still in the same struggle. We have, uh, you see the black men getting shot on TV for being out of their zone. And, you know, these are, these are guys that ventured into the wrong neighborhood or, 
Of course, you know? uh, the, for me, the most exciting thing is the intersectionality of the struggles, you know, I say, and yeah. leaders like Angela Davis and others leading these, of course, uh, it's very powerful. And uh, the, the, uh, when it comes to like selling out and temptation, I think every human being faces them. I'm yeah. sure you, I, I don't think even the most uncompromised person, like, gets, like, I've gotten temptation where I was like, hmm, and I was like, no, <laughs> you know, but I won't lie. It wasn't just like, no, right away. But of course, it takes a second, like, oh, and then, you know, you feel like flatter, and then you're like, no, that's against my values. And then, you know, uh, it's, it's even. But you know, you, you know, it, it even comes out to, for example, like with Detroit Techno. Um, I think some people are built to leave. This is going to seem strange to you, but some people are built to leave. Um, and furthermore, when they leave, they erode the stereotype that people have of the ones that stay. Um, they like, wow. Yeah. I'll give you a great example. One one of our, to me, one of our greatest ambassadors is Jeff yeah. Mills. Yeah. You see, um, he, he the people, they like, whoa, man, wait a minute. And Jeff come from a really tough neighborhood. Extreme. People look at Jeff and go, wow, is that potential still sitting there in Detroit? Is, is there actually more Jeff Mills out there? And Cornelius to tell you, it's hundreds of them. It's not, yeah. just like in your neighborhood. It's hundreds of them. So when, to be honest, I don't compare anything to Detroit. So I'm just okay. But you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> yeah. People with potential. People yeah, yeah. that have given. If Jeff would have went to all those fancy colleges and shit, hey man, he'd be putting a whole lot of people out of job. You know, that's supposedly better educated than him. So he, him, Robert Hood, uh, uh, Kevin Sanderson. You know. Uh, you got guys that they belong on the world stage. I think everybody got to know their role, you know. Of course. I, I'm not against that at all. Yeah. Uh, just to be clear, for me, compromise is shaping what you have to say for the pleasure of others. It's not say yeah, what yeah, you yeah, want, yeah. say it wherever yeah. you want, say it as loud as you want. But for me, right. shaping it for entertainment purposes or, for, or to please others. Yeah, I got you. I got you. I mean... I got a lot of problems with these hip hop guys, how they, how they, you know, fraudulent. And then they get our radio. If you was to come here and listen to our radio, it it would appall you because uh, as you know, prison is a private industry here in the United okay. States. That's something I'm very, I, I do a lot of, uh, like a lot of the mixes and stuff when I play, is I play a lot from Angela Davis and, uh, and Michelle, uh, Alexander, I think about the private prison system, uh, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, they, you know, they pretty much, uh, and it, it was part of the evolution of you are, we, uh, we understood that we was being guided by commercial radio right to prison. Horrible. Yeah. In fact, if you ever want to see, uh, there's a real good speaker on it. He, he, he's a controversial figure, but uh, Cornelius can send you, uh, it's a guy that I really like. His name is White Mike. And uh, he's White Mike on Black Radio. And I'm, Cornelius will send it to you, uh, what White Mike be talking about. But uh, that's what I told you. We get a virus. We get a virus every 10 years. This particular one has lasted since the uh, 70s when they started uh, commercializing and corporatizing radio. So, uh, you know, it's, it's a, I don't know. It seems like a, a lifelong battle, but I have found that the records talk to people in ways that I never could. So of course. I, 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 like, I'm very hesitant to do these interviews and stuff because they tend to put the emphasis on me when, uh, as like we spoke before, Yes, I'm just the kind of do it. There's some bigger situations at work here that guide the music to what it's supposed to be. And uh, 
But I think the values for me is very important. Like you cannot. I feel you. The values I feel cannot you. be. Uh, so I want to ask when when, when did like when do you remember your because you just talked when you and Jeff started you are like how what were you like do you remember the process between having the idea and manifesting it? Yeah, it it grew out of uh, what we what we were experiencing. I mean, I was a session musician at a local studio here and I was seeing black artists that had to uh, get their nose surgery and get pointed noses and skin lightning and all types of shit. I also saw artists that was completely made up and guys like us in the studio would make up all the music and the artist was just like a little puppet or something. Uh, The major, I got to see the asshole of the major record industry. And they were creating products, not art. Yeah, exactly. That's what they was making. It w- they was converting to products. You know, the girls all had to be beautiful, nobody fat, nobody too dark, nobody, all these parameters where uh, my coach- Entertainment. Yeah, my coach at the time, Don Davis, who owned the studio that we worked at, he would always laugh and say, Mike, you starting to see it for what it really is now, huh? You know, he, he had got out of the music business for these very reasons, because you couldn't be a real artist. You know, he, he got disenfranchised with it, if that's the word, but he was coaching me. And uh, other guys, like, uh, like I said, some of the engineers, George Clinton would come in and drop knowledge on us and tell us all about the major, he, he they all, completely took my desire to be on a major label away. It was gone. I had no intention of this shit. Uh, On the other hand, Jeff Mills, he's a DJ spinning on our biggest radio station, still the biggest radio station here at WJLB. And Jeff is mixing it all up like he do. He, He playing Chicago house music. He's playing New York, New York hip hop music. He's playing Detroit techno. He's mixing it up until uh, about 1991, 92. They told him to stop playing Public Enemy, Paris, Gangstar, and uh, EPMD. There was a couple others. And most of these groups were social political groups. Yeah. And so the black radio station, yeah, the so-called black radio station is telling the guy quit playing stuff that's good for the community. As long as it's booty, booty, party, party. Pacify them. Yeah, so we understood that early, we understood that the radio was actually not good for our community no more. We knew that. Yeah, like they they sell you a lifestyle through jingles, you know? Yeah, yeah, and you're able to, if you can tell the kids how to dress, you can invest in clothes, you know, it's a lot of money in the hood. It's a lot of money to be made if you can control people. And then at the end of the day, you can drive them all right to the prison and they can sit there for the next 60 years and get the fuck out the way. And work for cheap labor. Yeah, pretty much, and yes. For free, it's like slavery. You know, they, they get paid less than a dollar a day or something. And- exactly. So, you know, we departed from that. We saw what was going on. And uh, I, I, can, I, I can actually say, it was the conditions we lived in that formed underground resistance more so than uh, us being geniuses and figuring out, let's make underground resistance. <laughs> it's not, that's not yeah, how you brought I meant just like the dream, like, like you know, just, you know, th- there's a really beautiful part between the, an idea you have and then when you actually have it in front of you, you know? Yeah. It's like but, when you think of a song or a concept or anything, and then that uh, there's a beautiful, Oh, not not always beautiful. Sometimes it's like painful birthing process. Is I think, but it's, it was necessity. It sounds like it came almost out of necessity. Yes, and then uh, yeah, just like Public Enemy did, and any other thing, Martin Luther King, all that shit evolved out of necessity. I'm sure if we so, lived in the suburbs and was rich, we would have never made underground resistance. Yeah. You know. So so explain the words underground resistance. It's it's many meanings. I can't tell you all of them. Okay. I told you one: urban yeah, reality. reality. 
we our initial resistance is to bro programmed radio and TV that programs us to fail. Uh, it promotes stereotypes and other assorted bullshit, all designed to tell us we can't. And we was very much against that. But instead of taking it head on, we did, we decided to do something viral with what we do and stay out of the way of the music and let the music do what it do. Let the music and the art- Plant the values. Explain, yes, explain us. And therefore, soften up the world to not only soften them up, but wake them up to what's coming their way. You know, um, warn them in a sense uh, of what was coming their way. So I'm very proud that electronic music is 35 years old and still strongly independent. Every day there's new equipment being made that's affordable, that kids can get into and express themselves electronically. They don't need major radio uh, labels to be on. They can do the shit through another electronic thing that I, I hope we helped to innovate as well. The dreams we installed, the internet, the power of the internet and um, the shaping of it, you know? Um, I, I just feel very proud of what the music was able to accomplish and I hope it could stay independent even longer because the more colors you got in the rainbow, the prettier it looks, you know? Once you start stripping all the colors out the rainbow, it ain't a rainbow no more. It's just some bullshit corporate. Corporations should not control art. They have no business controlling art. So uh, they control products. And that's what I learned in the, in the uh, early 80s that corporate, corporate, most corporate music companies is looking for a product, not the, the, the meaning, the, not they're not interested in what the music can do yeah and, and like um uh, something i find which is synonymous in the values of living and to the values of uh, expressing musically like though you know as you said that society is trying to shape us and especially the powers that they're trying to dictate how we go where we go and the path we take yeah. and since we are young like uh, telling us that we are this way or that way or and um, music, uh, there is uh, there is music to keep people comfortable and to pacify them, and to uh, perpetuate the system of violence. But there's yeah. also music that makes everything stop for a second, whether yeah. through the music or through the power of dance. Also, as you say, they're both the keys to the universe. And here we start to think. Mm -hmm. is this really is, is this path right for me and start to break down and start to see new possibilities and choose new possibilities away from these paths that we all uh, were born and, and they were paved for out for us and it's a lifelong struggle to really free yeah. ourselves well I, I just think that if people were to look at the again the success of viruses. It's, it's an evil way to look at things, you know. Um, I got a question for you. What's the most successful predator on the planet Earth? Human? No, not even close. Virus? Chameleon. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, no muscles, nothing. Just the ability to Oh yeah, Same. yeah, 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 yeah. True, yeah. true. To to like so, blend into anything. Yeah. So. But this is so true. This is like capitalism. You know, like even when Detroit made this pure expression, you had chameleons trying to come and disguise as Detroit, and you know, it's like damn, very powerful well, symbol. There's nowhere <laughs> they're not gonna try yeah. to penetrate. Yeah. Well, you know it. it all I'm saying is, is if you are aware that these things exist, then uh, you can, you too can study them and find ways 
to uh, maybe you physically can't leave an environment, but uh, there's other ways you can. You, you your spirit can travel anywhere. So uh, I and never inspiration felt, too. Yeah, I never felt beat. I never felt. You know, it's yeah. It's times I get a little depressed and shit. Like I show you what it looked like. There it is, right there. You know, it's the the big gray machine, but it it don't it don't uh for me sometimes it's strength it's strength in uh pressure it's strength you know pressure make diamonds yeah you know I think you and, are uh, uh, so imagination magic like super not everything there's like a whole well, thank universe you. of thank uh, you. and I am much more so a student to that than to any to even music from my own areas or to and the student uh, musically and in values and because also I remember you know I people think I'm like younger but I'm uh, mid 30s and so I remember a long time ago like I, I, I there was someone very influential in uh, in the when I did live in Vancouver his name was Scott W and he's one of the people that is always in the background, never refuses to put himself in his name or yeah. anything he does. And he's one of the people that when all the world went like minimal and all of the, well, what they start to call, he continued to represent like Detroit artists and to book Detroit artists. And he helped Stingray get like an agent and he, but he never yeah. talked about it or never anyway. And, uh, and so when, so I feel like I was, he was an inspiration for me, like a medium of the messages of Detroit, like where I was, re I learned all of these lessons through him and I would say you know my people are dying I'm not here to party and to feel like yeah. I'm here because of the political and the power and the rebellion and the revolution that comes with this not because mm -hmm. I'm here to you know yeah yeah I feel you it's uh same here you know I would love if if my granddaughter could hear something inspiring that would would lift her into another mindset you know her her heroes is manufactured you know they're not you know her musical heroes they they manufactured and um they just a product you know and uh that authentic authenticity she has to come down here and listen to music and she loves electronic music but it isn't it ironic that you got detroit with Detroit techno being some famous thing and all over the world, but they don't play it on the radio here. You know, um, the whole comeback of the city, so-called comeback, <laughs> can be easily linked to Detroit techno. You know, um, I mean, it, there was a time when, uh, when we were really rocking and rolling with this music we were we were second only to GM in shipping international packages. Wow, that's how that's how dead the city was. It was cars and music and nothing else. <laughs> and uh, we were second to GM, um, multi billion dollar corporation, and we was in a house shipping as much or more sometimes international packages. So it, you know, this whole trip has just been an testament to to not giving up and applying steady pressure. Yeah, uh, miracles don't come in, some miracles come in overnight, but some take 30, 40 years to evolve. And I know we all want things to happen fast, I, me, me included. It can't happen fast enough, but if you don't apply steady pressure, um, nothing will happen at all. Have, so, have you ever almost given up? No. Nah. No, uh, I think remaining in the, in the environment, that's what gives you the strength to keep pushing. Had I removed myself and went to Berlin, or like you said, it's so damn nice. Shit, man, you eating all this good food and the rest, everybody, nobody robbing you. You know, you lose your edge. You actually lose your edge and you get soft. So for me, yeah, it's here in Mississippi for me. And I don't like going to Mississippi at all. 
so they can keep that shit. But uh, if if you can believe, it's <laughs> you know, uh, yeah, I I stay in the shit. I just stay in it. And you are has created. Um, I mean, it has created, like, like you said, that a lot of people don't even know they can dream or they don't know that there's other ways around. And there's many people who uh, be, started to dream through the power of you are like, or, or, or whose lives were rewritten in a way, like James Simpson, for example. Uh, mm. uh, or yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, and, and again, things, these things are forever. Like the power. I mean, of- I think I think the power in our situations, and certainly Detroit ain't nothing like where you at. But I think the power in our situations is that that pressure creates diamonds, and people yeah. should wear that shit with a badge of honor, man. You know, you you can see it's good to see the asshole of the whole world. It's great to be in the asshole sometimes because you can look up and see all the shit, you know? Um, you know what people are capable of. I mean, I feel sorry for the people that live out of these urban centers in Detroit. Uh, they call them Trumpsters or whatever, but they were so easily manipulated because life is great for them. They don't, you know, they everything's good, you know? So they don't really... They're very easily manipulated, as as the world could see. The world saw it. It was like, oh my God, these people are so out of touch. So really, who has the advantage? You know, if you in military, if you're living in the past, you lose. So for me, being in the front lines of every possible way to get rid of me and still surviving the shit. I feel like I got an edge that nobody can even fuck with. They can't fuck with my edge, you know? Yeah, you could take me out, dog. Just like you could take people out there. But the dream is going to live on. How do you kill the dream? That's yeah. that's the question. And it's hard and, to do. <laughs> and you've made a lot of people dream. Can you think of how, yeah. of people you've... Or mom, like, I'm sure Robert Hood, for example. Or, or, or there's a lot of people... Do you remember them dreaming? Like Yeah. Yeah, they, we, you know, uh, it's an old saying from down south, a man with no dreams is a dangerous man. And uh, yeah, because they're giving up. And I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. Of course, so, you know, yeah. And a man people, with dreams is also very dangerous because exactly. he has the power to change things. Exactly. He can change things. So it's all a, a, It's all a dream anyway, this little 60, 50, 60 years we get on this thing anyway. So it's just all a big dream anyway. At the end of the day, we just go go some something else. But for me, uh, I enjoy Detroit. I have so much fun here. Uh, yeah, it's true. Half of the shit that I used to enjoy doing was illegal, but <laughs> I enjoy doing it, you know, racing cars and all kind of shit. For me, it was a big just a big empty playground for us to have fun in, you know? And I didn't, I didn't feel any, uh, not until I got to Europe did I realize that, oh wow, I did miss a lot of things education wise, but, and then I felt sorry for them because they didn't have the same life as me. They were very trained and we was wild and free, just like, yeah. Just like in nature, we was wild and free. Still am. That's why I stay here. Uh, I'm wild and free. I can make any kind of music I want to make when I want to make it. And some kind of strange way, it talks to people. Uh, so I know at the end, I'm not really making the music anyway. That's why we had a face mask on. You don't need to know me. You know our music. Our music is what you met us through. There's no reason for you to know yeah. me. I think you are is bigger than you and then Jeff and then Evan. exactly you are exactly. Is like a, and and not only like we're not only talking in terms of techno, but a lot of artists, even like you know, in in the industrial music and in, in in all that, started to adopt a lot of these approaches to you know. I mean this has uh, translated into so many different mu- movements. 
I mean, just, 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 just imagine, you know how many people steal our logo. They steal that logo so much. And we over here broke. I'm telling you, I just got the damn tax bill, Corn. It's in the mail now. They got the nerve to charge us taxes after all this slave shit. But right. listen, they steal that logo. And, and guess what? Yeah, I could go after them. I could go after them with the digital righteous, like we did Sony. With Jack. Did you know about that? With, with Jaguar? Jaguar? Yeah. Yeah. We lit their ass on fire with the digital righteous. I could go after anybody yeah. with the digital righteous. But sometimes theft, theft in the hood is kind of a way of life, you know? Uh, yeah. Hey, hey, man, I had to steal that idea from you, you know, blah, blah, blah. You know, so like I told you, what's wrong with uh, some kids in Mexico City bootlegging our shirt? And then corner corn call them and say, look, man, all right, you motherfuckers getting paid, but bring one of our DJs down there when you got enough money to, to <laughs> buy an airline ticket. And that's what we did. And, uh, oh, cute. We make a lot of relationships around the world. People who... With, with people that bootleg shit, <laughs> yeah. you know, it because for me, it just the, the label and what the label has done and probably will do later is well, well, well beyond whatever me and Jeff saw early in the game. We, we. We was just tools. We was really just tools. I mean, here know? I am sitting here, even if you never met me, like uh, this, you know, I, I say again and again that I am a student of those values, not just of the art, of the values, of the messages, of the, so, you know, and then me, I do events there and with, I try to spread those values, you know, so you can't even keep track. Like you may, now you know the story, but maybe you could have never known the story, you know, uh, try yeah. to s send that message of like, play from your heart, express from your heart. And, you know, don't like enter, it's not about entertainment. It's about expression. Well, you, you know, the, in corner, corner tell you this, one of the greatest things I loved about electronic music was that at times you could just connect, disconnect from what was commonly known as the standard in music. Um, for instance, uh, we've been approached a number of times to play with uh, orchestras, with classical music. And uh, in one instance, me and the classical musicians was getting into it because for me, they was too slow, too rigid, too trained. They had no, what's the word, corn? Uh, Improvisation. Impro yeah, they didn't have none of that. The shit just didn't exist. Yeah. It was like you was working with an army. They had I mean, to this is exactly direction. what jazz did, right? And this is like, in general, Black culture and Black music, what did to the world is to free it, people from this, like, orchestra like perfectly choreographed let me tell you something me and jeff mills and Derek and juan atkins none of us would have had a job if sun ra and john coltrane and george clinton if they'd have had the technology we had available to us none of us would be having nothing to say right now okay they they did just what you said with the instruments they had available that's why electronic is important to get into Palestine. It's important to get into South Africa. Them kids will innovate new shit that these rich kids can't think of. They can't experience it. They're, they're at the loss. Not the kids that's going through the shit. The kids going through the shit is the more resistant strain. The virus ain't gonna kill them. They gonna survive. These rich motherfuckers that's soft, they can't invent shit. And I sat up there with these people and they couldn't touch me with their fucking instruments. They could not touch one yeah. fucking keyboard I had. And I don't like playing with them. It did, I tried, uh, the one guy I like was Diodato and he's a bad musician, but he understood my impro improvising. He understood jazz and shit, he knew. See, there was a, there was a war between classical and jazz of because course. 
These motherfuckers is like, you're not supposed to improvise stuff. You got to be told what to do. I'm like, man, I'm not in the army, motherfucker. I do what I want to do with this instrument. And I think this is how it's all really connected to, unfortunately, slavery. And because there, I mean, you know, Sun Ra, I, I played a mix uh, on Radio Al-Hara too, which was Arabic music and Pharaoh Sanders. It was all one, uh, Arabic music and Pharaoh, but Pharaoh, the liberation, the self-liberation you can attain listening to his music it's madness like you it's like even no matter how shackled you are you become free yeah well i can tell you and this this shit is deep theory wise mm -hmm. um i had got tired of the western tuning scale and i found it kevin i mean not kevin but Juan and some of the other guys whether they knew it or not, sometimes they wasn't on the Western tuning scale. You know, that's why I say sometimes what you don't know is good for you. You can explore with yep, an open yep. mind. So people, if they want to talk to their people, most of the time, their people's tuning scale ain't on the Western tuning scale. That's what popular music is on. You see? So these synthesizers, not the old ones, but some of these newer synthesizers pay more respect to other cultures. So that's a clue to some of my younger brothers out there that wanna create some shit. They need to, sometimes you gotta go backwards, back into the past, into who you are. You gotta find out who you are. Yeah, you can't, you can't even, uh, you can't take it out of you. You like, you can't, even me, I lived abroad. You, you, even when you taste, when I taste bread here, it's, I don't feel I'm who I am, you know? I, you can never take it out of you, I think. Can I, can I tell you part of my rage? Of course. I'm a mutant. I don't know what my bread tastes like. I'm, I'm telling your people right now, they strimps. I don't know none of my fucking traditional songs. I don't know who God is. But you I have just the evolved in this, I just evolved in this shit. You see what I'm saying? I'm a, I'm a, I don't know what I am. So I figured maybe I'm a conduit for what parts of me it used to be. I think there's a great strength in people knowing who they are and knowing who they are. We, we should be an example to what happens if you get lost and forget who the fuck you are. So for me, that's what I tell people when I meet them. I say, yeah, brother, I know it's tough, but you eating your food, you talking your language, you worshiping your God, and the world is yours, brother. You just can't lose track of it. For us to be lost, and then to be found is a motherfucker. And we found it in this music. It's the only link we got back to where we came from. And that's why I believe beats travel through DNA. And I don't care if the Africans like me or not. The beats say the whole shit, you know? I know. And uh, I hope one day I can touch the ground there is that dream, it's just a big ass guess. You know, it's like a question mark. Yeah, it's a sad part of it. You know, the Drexian thing, the slave ship, you the know, whole shit. It's sad, it's sad uh, but even though we know very much also the, the roots and, and especially, you know, being under oppression, you kind of hold on even more. But still, we are in the process of re-choosing who we are today of not like just adopting so there's still a very similar process of who are we uh, as people who are modernizing but we don't want to import blindly yeah. swallow yeah stuff. just just build on build on who you are yeah and go on and from choose, there because choose. your people is powerful and they've been here for they've been civilized way before 
most of these colonizers even thought about it and everybody knows it and it ain't they didn't have no help from the aliens and all that other bullshit they try to make it like uh african people or, or, or middle eastern people ain't smart enough to figure out their own shit they, you know it's, it's ridiculous and uh that whole ancient alien shit is crazy man you know them people figured the shit out way before europe got civilized and it, they can't deal with it but anyway like i said for us for me i'm just every day i'm here i just be happy i'm here <laughs> i feel like i cheated cheated destiny by being here because so many of my friends ain't they just dead they bought into this bullshit and they dead and i can't even i wish i could say i feel sorry for them but they took that shit away too sometimes you know if it ain't my general family i'm so used to death it's like well i guess he got it easy we make jokes out of it yeah you know he you. got it easy now shit so we just keep pushing forward and so I'm what going, is, uh, what's your dream? Can you, you speak or can I, should I say what's Mike's dream for the just world? Just keep living. Um, oh, the dream, uh, Black Planet. I would love, you know, the shit that they saying now about colonizing Mars and all that. Yeah. People should see the mistake in that. It's a I, bad I think word. I so too. Me too. I'm like... <laughs> Why why are we worshiping someone who wants to colonize more things? Like, <laughs> haven't we colonized enough on Earth? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> so, you know, my dream is first contact. I don't think we're ready as a human race, but I would love, I wish I could see first contact. Okay, and what is your, uh, uh, do you know about the Stargate theories and that uh, Detroit and the Heart Plaza was an ancient burial? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not that smart. I, I yeah. wish I did. I like it, but I, think I, 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 do, I do think they out there and um, I think they just observe and they stay in distance because we're not ready. We're just not ready. So uh, hopefully as humanity, we can get to that point where first contact would pretty much solidify people to knowing that well we're human beings that's what we are we human beings let's come together we're gonna have to yeah. <laughs> we're gonna have to because if these boys came from if they traveling past the speed of light we we got a lot to learn so i just think uh That, that would be a great dream to have, be, uh, be around during first contact and able to see out there, and, 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 but in a peaceful way, like on Star Trek, where you can't interfere. And I think the people observing us is that smart, where they just don't interfere, you know? Do you think music I, takes you to some of the frequencies that are not just here at the surface? Um, depends on... If these guys keep creating these instruments, yeah, a lot of times, every time, that's what I love about electronic music, guys. Guys like Dieter Doffler and, and the guys at Teenage and, and, and Korg. And, you know, each time one of these young minds put something together, the, the sound possibilities just grow. So for me, I see a bright future for electronic music. EDM and all that. They got to be careful with that because they get, they falling into formulas and uh, yeah, formulas can get, you know, known, captured and counted, you know, but like when you packaging, like uh, yeah. packaging within, uh -oh. like, like Bruce Lee say, better to be like water, formless, shapeless and colorless and odorless brother, you know, just do your thing and fall in where you fit in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah rules rules uh rules is good in some instances but not when you create it. it's just not gonna work so no of course on every level because like there as again the liberating elements of jazz of detroit techno sorry just a second yep There's yep someone... oh what you think corn it's pretty smooth all right well she's enjoyable to talk to for real Well, yeah, I mean, that's the thing. I mean, she, that's what I was trying to say. She's... Yeah, she's like, good people. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, she's good. She's good. I had a feeling, but, you know, for me, it's hard to get into this mind space sitting here, yeah. you know, 
<laughs> yeah, hey, you know what? Hey, we was just talking about, I was real apprehensive about doing the interview because I'm in Detroit mode, you know? I'm not, I'm not dreaming and visioning stuff right now. I'm in construction mode and it's all too real. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it's fun. I'm sitting here overlooking the uh, skyline and I'm watching Kenny Dixon and them load in some stuff. And I am very, very proud to, that anybody would want to talk to us about any damn thing. And which, which so, the other thing well, so, I'm uh, really yeah. grateful. Like, I honestly do agree that you are is a power beyond you and Jeff. But to be honest, the, I'm not going to lie that the, the values that you brought to this planet is also something to talk about and something that I am appreciative for its influence on my life and I know on many others. Like, uh, the, the your values are an art of, of their own. Thank you. I, 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 uh, I just, yeah, they, they come, they come from a long way. They come from a long way of pain and, 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 you know, the ability to, like I said, sit here in the asshole and watch all the sickness come through it and, and finally figure out through, through some very enlightened, women and men in my life that uh, were able to, I, I can say the values are an accumulation of our experience here um, and, and our hope and our hope. So I, I, I thought when we uh, got the creed, when the creed came down to us, I thought it was uh, well beyond, well beyond us. It, uh, music and art are two of the things that do make me believe in the supernatural. That's about it, really. Exactly. Books don't do it for me. Yeah. <laughs> but, but I, you know, I'm doing this as like um, collecting, I want to archive people with really uncompromised values for like, like an archive of that. Uh, but also it's manifesting in a not book, but children's book, like just really silly drawing about like but just like I'm not actually planning to publish anything but a lot of these ideas come and uh yeah and I, I and I yeah I, I think like inside of us like in pure expression also connects us to everything else yeah. and beyond yeah 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 it's true it's true to, I mean like no when you say know yourself no and this is a, a process but the deeper we go inside ourselves, also even one walk outside starts to sound better and you feel more mm -hmm. connected to the moon. And oh yeah. If you still got hope, I you can be in prison, but you're not really there because you, your mind ain't there. So, uh, and maybe like with our forefathers, they knew, well, I'm not going to be free. Now, it ain't going to be me, but maybe these grandbabies to be free. So, this is the way that creed came to be. You know, it came to be out of a long, long succession of uh, people with hope. So uh, I hope that people uh, take heed to the power of music and art. It's why all dictators get rid of musicians and, uh, <laughs> yeah. and artists. That's the first fucking thing they do because that shit inspires people beyond their own uh, capability, art and music. To me, none of us is lost. It's, it's people that love money and mix money with religion and it, it, they all lost and fucked up to me. So I feel sorry a lot of times when I go around the world. I don't be happy to be in places sometimes. You know, I like, I feel that on one hand, I'm a little jealous that the people got so much of their culture and they still not satisfied. And then on the other hand, I look at, well, Detroit built some strong ass people, but because the only thing we got is hope. And I'm sure the Palestinians can relate to that as well. It's, yeah. it's your and driving force. Lebanese, my mom is Lebanese. And, you know, after this last explosion, like for me, really, there is nowhere else yeah. to go but imagination now. Like, like I, yeah. I can't 
deal anymore with the world. Like it had, everything is inside, and every, but inside is the, the gateway to like. Yeah, I mean, that, I saw that. I saw that explosion. That that shit was unbelievable. It was unbelievable. I mean, why would you store that much aluminum nitrate, knowing? Ooh, money, money, money. Root of all evil, boy. But yeah. hey, you know. But yeah, and and sometimes people like they say, for example, for me that I'm maybe naive, and but I'm not naive at all. I've seen so much horrible things in my life. Yeah. But yeah. I feel like the more I see there's no way forward but hope there is yeah. no i you know like some people in europe for example when someone stands up for palestine they say keep politics and art separate like i we don't have that <clears throat> choice <laughs> yeah well i'm sure the people in vietnam is very happy that the musicians did what they did to end that war because that was wrong and yeah. you know what's sad is I got to deal with all these guys knocking on my door, need food, need clothes. They all Vietnam veterans. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sure. They they don't show that shit on TV. You know the aftermath of the war. They some of them is so mentally disturbed they can't stay in the house. They stay outside because they're more comfortable outside. They yeah, dying um, off now, but you know it's it's uh. It's a great irony uh, living here. It's a it's a hell of an irony. We're getting yeah. gentrified. That's what I'm saying. It, which is a, but a you whole are, new. You are has a whole catalog of community work. To yeah. Well, you know what? We it wasn't like we thought we was doing community work. We thought we had a business. You know, we was <laughs> but we just stayed in the community, and uh, clearly. We couldn't go nowhere else and it wasn't even thought about. So it was a good journey for us as well. People would say, you know, you're doing like Cornelius. Cornelius would say, Mike, you guys are doing so much for the community. I'm like, we are. I mean, of we're course. just trying to survive. Making someone dream is the biggest gift you can give to someone. Well, you know, that's that's where the learning process comes. I saw one of your questions and it said, what what makes you keep going? And uh, yeah, when people come from all around the world, we had the uh, group, what was that group? Corn Down, the uh, oh, rap yeah. band. Oh yeah, the, uh, the hip hop group, yeah. Yeah, they came yeah. and they signed the wall in Arabic. We got signatures from Russia, New Zealand, oh, yeah. uh, the hood. My boys be writing seven miles on there. And, uh, yeah, sometimes, you know, when I lose my way and it, it seemed like too much, I go down in the basement and look at all the, whew, all the encouragement uh, around the world. And uh, maybe yeah. we'll bring you to the area one day. When I'm yeah, back. yeah, that. And that would know, be close to Africa. Yeah, even Half close would be good. Yeah, close would be good enough for me. I always. <laughs> I always uh, tease my uh, brothers in uh, France because they always give me free airport rides. The Moroccans and the Algerians, they'd be like, where you from, brother? I'd be like, Morocco. And they'll start laughing. <laughs> <laughs> and they'll give me a ride. i will say, hey, man, they got the same shit on you guys. They, they never charge me. Oh, yeah. I love, yeah, I love them, man. You know, and they, they never charge me and they make me feel like piece of me is at home, you know, like even any touch of it, but yeah, you'd have to uh, come over here to see. Well, I'm sure after that last presidential election, I'm so glad the world got to see the double standard. Um, yeah. I'm so glad they got to see it because unfortunately we live in this double standard. It's uh, for Cornelius, uh, to graduate from the University of Michigan, it is such an accomplishment because I'm, I know another young man that went through University of Michigan and they tried to destroy him, mentally destroy him. And he's a semi broken man right now. He's having trouble from the mental anguish that he went through just to earn a degree because of the double standard. 
uh, the man is brilliant. He's smart. But spiritually, he's not as strong as Cornelius is. So, you know, for these guys to uh, come to bat for us intellectually and academically and for Corn to encourage us and say, yeah, you are doing something for the community. You are doing something for Detroit. You are you are doing something. And just it, think it, of the people that uh, had dreams. And I think that should keep you going. I'm sure you saw faces like Rob, Robert Hood when he was. Oh, like, yeah. Oh, yeah. Giving, Robert Hood. You were like, not yet, not yet or what not. And, you know, and yeah, like, this Robert guy. Hood is some guys that you can see they're not going to be beat. They driven. They did. They just got the same kind of drive. Jeff Mills, Robert Hood, James Stinson. But I imagine a lot of other faces that you saw with like, I have something or I yeah, you know, that's right. that just collect those emotions. Of yep. I, I know guys that in their mind and women too, they can't be beat. They just not going to accept uh, mediocrity or failure. And it's just a shame that that doesn't get depicted in the media for us. You know, it's a lot of uh, people that just won't accept what's being handed out, you know? So, uh, you know, yeah. When for me, all I got to do to get strength and inspiration is just look at my own neighborhood. You know, uh, the Vietnam vets, they, they live outside. You know, how blessed am I? Um, I got friends of mine that I support. They live outside. How blessed am I? So I can't cry. You know, I can't cry. I got heat. You're I so got cool. electricity. And whenever I got my gear, I got a chance to do something else. So um, and that's what I really live for. I live to try again. You know, regardless of uh, our past accomplishments, um, we got so many kids and uh, that's why we was trying to build a school for uh, electronic music. And I'm happy to say that uh, YG and Cornelius, uh, two, two very respected friends of mine, uh, I think to teach everything that's not on the radio, that's gonna be a new approach. That's our new virus right there. Teach music that's not on the radio because the radio ain't your friend. It's, it's bought and paid for by corporations. So, yeah. you know, why battle with them? Why not just com compete with them? And that's what we're gonna do. Great, and I'm one of your students and uh, I carry your inspiration with me and I manifest it through my dreams. Well, thank you. Uh, thank you a lot for that. And, and you always welcome over here if we still here. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. I, I'm going to be one of the, I'm going to get vaccinated soon because I work in elder care and in a in very fragile. So I'm going to be one of the first ones in the back. Good. Good. So when that happens, I hope... Maybe I can come and I don't have to quarantine when I'm back. Yeah. And please. And I would be glad to take you on a, uh, one of my famous uh, tours of Detroit so I could show you uh, show you some things. You know, they fortunately. Uh, they still exist. It's it's a bad look sometimes for the big boys, but for the world, they can see what's up, you know. So I'd be glad to take you and uh, you know, anytime you welcome here. Okay. And don't pay for a hotel or none of that. We got room, okay? Okay. I don't have money to pay for a hotel, but sure. Good. So <laughs> you can come. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you All so right. much for this. I just want to say I really I know how much but you've done like so few interviews in your life and it means the world that you did this and Cornelius, thank you so much for helping also. Just mm. up. I hope that um, I, I could honor your, the legacy of your values, of your visions, of your dreams, of your messages. And... Well, just, I think if you just look past us and know it's not really us, it's just some kind of spirit moving through us. Yeah. And like I said, it's a, uh, I'm remaining true to them. Well, yeah, I, I try to be here to catch it because obviously it comes to Detroit a lot for whatever reason. It visits, it's like Santa Claus. It, it comes all the time. So that's why I won't leave. It's, uh, it's here. It's here. I, don't, I can't describe it. And truly, 
Trust and we me. can hear it. Trust me. Yeah. Sometimes after when we get through making this stuff or, or it comes through us, I can't, I'll be like, man, whoa, what the, what was that shit? It's like you had nothing to do with it at all. So it's very difficult to sometimes take credit and say, okay, yeah, I played this on that or that. I never say I'm No, I know. I think something. your art is bigger than you. I won't deny this. Yes. But the, the yes. values and the dreams, this I credit. Well, thank you. And it, like I said, that, that came from many people. So uh, I'll tell them, I'll tell them what you said, especially right. my mama. All right. Oh, okay. Much love. Thank you so yep. much. And we'll yep. keep in touch and I'll come to Detroit soon. All right. Thank you. Okay. Good night. Right, bye-bye. Bye, Carnina. Bye. Bye.